Hi everybody, it's me again. I wanted to make another video about a topic that I get asked about a lot. It's called Senior Airmen Below the Zone or BTZ as in short. If you don't know what BTZ is or Senior Airmen Below the Zone is, it's basically a very high prestigious award that an airman can get to make E4 early. So before your original date of putting E4 on, whether you're four or six year, as a four year, you have to be wearing E3 20 months time in grade and you must have 36 months time in service. As a six year contract, you must be wearing E3 as 28 months time in grade and 36 months time in service. So you can roughly calculate when you would put on E4 and then from there, you can guess whatever six months minus that is when you would be able to put on E4 if you are allowed to have BTZ. BTZ is a really cool award that kind of gives you like almost a special perk. And basically the perk is to test early for staff, maybe a year earlier than you were originally supposed to. So to find any and more information, if you would like to, if you refer to AFI, so Air Force Instructions, AFI 36 dash 2502 you guys can reference any type of afi you can find them on google and that kind of stuff if you're more interested in kind of reading instead of maybe listening to this video or you can listen to this video and still reference the guide and the guide is usually what we use as a permanent party to let each other know hey the rigs just got updated here's what we need to do now to change the process or whatever so BTZ is chosen as the top 15%, but it's chosen in two different ways. It's chosen either as a small unit or as a big unit or a large unit, as we call it. A small unit usually only has maybe three, two or less E3s going up for BTZ. And the larger unit will have five or six or more E3s going up for BTZ. So that could make the difference of whether you're a smaller unit or whether you're a bigger unit or a large unit. If you are a small unit, usually what happens is you will go against your entire base, so the entire wing of your base, just because if there's so many of you and you can't go anywhere else against another large unit because obviously that might be a little bit unfair, one personnel is maybe going against five other security forces, of course their things are going to look completely different as they have different work bullets and stuff so on from there. So the way that you figure out, it's like, hey, I'm really interested in getting this award. I know what it's about. I really want to get staff early. I want to make staff as soon as I can because I'm a six year or maybe I'm a four year and that's absolutely okay. What I would refer to is I would Google a BTZ calculator or just get with your local MPF or MPS and just get with your promotion section in career development and be like, hey, uh, this is when I put on E3. Do you have a calculator or something that can basically calculate when I'm supposed to put on E4 with or without BTZ? So with the top 15%, I'll give you kind of my example of what happened with me when I earned BTZ is, so my package was due about April or May of 2018. When I received my notice, it was about late June of the same year, and then I ended up putting on in September. So September 1st of 2018 is when I ended up putting on Senior Airman. If you remember anything about the Air Force, about how kind of a lot of personnel stuff works, assignments, equal plus and everything. The year is broken up into three months categories. So January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, and October, November, December. Those months will always stay together. So if anyone says, hey, your DROS is in August of 2017, your listing will come out in April of that year and stuff because you just happen to be put into that three month category or hey, maybe this or maybe that. So if you're ever interested in that kind of stuff, definitely make sure you keep track of which kind of quarter it's in. So first quarter, second quarter, third and fourth quarter, and then okay, it repeats. So when I was chosen for BTZ, it was late June. I believe only 14 of us were chosen. And like I said, because I'm in a small unit, I was the only one that was qualified at the time. So I went up 
against the entire wing of all of JBSA Lachlan. Not JBSA, the JBSA Lachlan only. So about 14 of us were chosen because, like I said, it is only the top 15%. I roughly calculated anywhere from 93 to 94 people went up. And from there, 15%, the top 14 was chosen. Usually you do get ranked. However, and fortunately for us, it was very informal as something was sent out and one of the commanders had possibly sent it out to someone who didn't know they weren't supposed to send it to the rest of the unit. So word got out pretty quickly. My unit celebrated with me. They were really excited for me as I worked very hard for it. Really, to get BTZ, what I tell the younger airmen and what I tell the trainees all the time is like, just make sure you're always going above and beyond. Make sure you're doing that whole airman concept because in the end, it really is like that. So your work bullets, your volunteering, your education, what are you doing to be a better airman? What are you doing to be a better airman than your wingman even, or than your peer? A big thing that you could do is you could do more volunteer boards, you could do more education, maybe even get your CCAF before even your BTZ board, which is a really awesome thing if you're able to do that. You could actually try to pick up extra duties. So if you're interested in maybe being a PTL or maybe being a safety rep of your unit, definitely speak to your supervisor and your chain of command and see if they'll let you either be the first primary or maybe the secondary and that kind of stuff and just get out there and volunteer another really big thing about volunteering what i tell my trainees a lot is if you're going to volunteer volunteer for something that you enjoy volunteer for something that you're passionate about it if you're not passionate about it you're not going to have a good time especially if you have to go against a board so sometimes you have to go against a btc board sometimes you don't if you do go against a BTZ board, definitely look up of how they report in. Usually I've heard you'll be wearing your blues and that kind of stuff, maybe seeing the Airman's Creed and reporting in. And sometimes the BTZ board will be a panel of senior NCOs, so people obviously you won't know as to be unbiased, and they'll be like, oh, I see that you might have done 50 hours at a soup kitchen. Can you tell me a little bit about your experience with that? And you'll be like, um... They were homeless. I, I don't know. That's not something you're passionate about. I'm passionate about helping others. I'm passionate about speaking to you guys and helping my trainees and younger airmen to find their kind of place in the world or to just point them in the better direction if they don't feel like they're getting that from whoever they need it from. So for me, I joined my airmen's council. So I was vice president and then I became president the next year. So for me, I really got involved with the community. I got involved with the elementary schools, the middle schools, and high schools, local recruiters, where I could go out, take some of my friends and be like, hey, do you wanna to talk to people in the debt program? Do you wanna to talk to these kids about like, hey, what it's like being in the Air Force? What's your job? No, I'm not a pilot. We don't all fly planes, I promise. And just simple stuff like that. So it is something of, hey, if you are maybe, say, if you're in a large unit like security forces or maintenance or even intel, all your work bullets are going to look the same. What are you going to do as an airman to be above and beyond than your workmates or your coworkers or your peers? And from there, that's how you kind of decide. Definitely reach out to your chain of command and to your mentors and ask, hey, what do you kind of think that I should do and that kind of stuff. And from there, it's really your choice of how you proceed to do it this way or to do it that way. But I really hoped that you enjoyed this short video about BTZ and maybe it gives you a tiny bit more clarity on just what BTZ is if you've never heard about it. You're more than welcome to message me any questions about BTZ or the Air Force. I'm more than happy to respond to you guys. I'll link my Instagram below for you guys that you can message me there or in the comments down below as well. And other than that, I want to thank you for watching my